Welcome back legends to another Outriders video. I know it's been really quiet last week. The dev news update was really small and in all honesty, it was a copy and paste of what we had the previous week. For the most part, there was almost nothing new there, nothing worth mentioning. So I have skipped that week entirely because I didn't want to waste your time in creating a video that's just going to give you zero information. However, this week we do have a ton of new information and we will go through that now. So according to PCF, the analytics are showing that the increase in drop rates has been very successful. And from what I'm seeing around Reddit and what I'm seeing around YouTube, this is the case. People are a lot more happier now as the loot and legendary drop rates are flowing through and people are getting the items they want. They also are happy that they're getting the items that they didn't have. The duplication process seems to be working. However, this does create a new problem and this is something PCF is currently now investigating. How they can get around it and they want your input on how they should proceed. So the current system is, if you have all the weapons, it will still re-roll and try and give you something you don't have, even if you have everything. Obviously, that's not great. If you're looking for a god rolled anime, for example, or a death shield, that's not great because it could drop and you'd lose it because it's going to try and re-roll. The second option they have for this is to turn that feature off entirely and if you don't have your weapons all ready for your accolade, well, you'll be grinding till the end of time most likely to get this. Now, I've personally put forward a suggestion which I think is a lot more fair and I'm waiting to hear what they actually say for this. What I've personally suggested is that the system itself remains in place. Now, hear me out. Don't lose your shit, just hear me out. It remains in place until you get the accolade. Once you've unlocked the accolade, it deactivates. That's it, because you've got every weapon at this point. You've got one of each. Even if you break it, you've got the mod. Even if you don't break it, the mod is there, you've got the capability. At that point, that duplication process deactivates and then the standard rules apply. It's RNG. Now the alternative to this is something else I also suggested is that they do targeted loot. Certain expeditions have a higher drop rate for a group of weapons and they could go that way. Personally, I think both options work. One, it deactivates and two, targeted loot kicks in. And I think this is, in my opinion, the best way to approach it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below regarding this. Do you think it's a good idea, bad idea? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you. I've also got a link to the actual update in the description below. So if you want to check it out, by all means go there, air your view. So now we move over to patch news from this and they say our latest patch unfortunately isn't quite ready for release today as we are continuing to test it. But we are aiming to release it early next week, ideally on Tuesday. So we can expect certain patch notes on Monday, hopefully if they decide to give it to us early. If not, it will be on Tuesday and I will be providing another video of these patch notes for you as per usual. But there is no patch today. So if you are expecting a patch today, sadly there is none. Now here is what you can look forward to in the upcoming patch for those of you that are on the Xbox platform that are still having certain difficulties signing in. Now this doesn't affect everyone, but it does affect a good number of you. They have improved the signing in process and made it faster and hopefully this will get past that timing out situation. Now, a lot of people have also been complaining about people joining matchmaking and joining an AFK group and or an AFK person. And honestly, that's a real pain, especially when you know you've waited five minutes to match make you go in and the person is afk and they're not doing anything and you've just wasted another five minutes it's just horrible so what they've done is implemented a procedure which gives you two minutes if you are afk away from your keyboard or away from your controller for two minutes and there is no interaction you will be kicked back to the home screen of course if you're interacting with npcs your skills your mods or any other thing where your character isn't moving but you are interacting with the game that itself will actually not be timing you out. Now it's not clear here if you go into that menu and stay there and then decide to go for a crap, if that's gonna actually time you out. That is something I'm gonna find out from the developers. I'm gonna put the question to them and hopefully we'll get a response to that. And if we do, I'll tag it into the pin message at the top. They've improved the visibility of Broodmother's Surge AoE attack, the blue flames, because people have been complaining that they can't see the blue flames. Not sure how, but I mean, it's there. It's on the floor. Everyone, whatever. They've improved it. 
And there's a bunch more fixes here. Scrap grenade would stop working after a cinematic or re when rejoining a session. That's been fixed. They've resolved an issue with the Technomancer's Borealis set and changed its description to match its new behavior. So the old description was increased weapon damage on frozen enemies by X. The new description is increased damage on frozen enemies by X. This is now taking into effect the actual abilities and not just weapon damage, which is how it was. They fixed the bug that causes the Trickster's Hunt of Prey to get stuck on activating, so that's cool, everyone should be happy about that, especially you Tricksters. Fixed the bug whereby bleed status from the armor mod Bloody Crush would not be inflicted on enemies hit with the Gravity Leap skill. This has been a problem for quite some time, I remember seeing this over a month ago, so it's good to see it finally fixed, especially for us Devastators. They fixed the bug whereby the Devastator's blood donation class node wouldn't work if the player didn't have other active skill life leech nodes or mods. Now I didn't personally notice this myself, maybe I haven't activated that, I must have activated that, but it's good to know it's fixed, but I didn't notice it in all honesty. Clarified the description for the Ravenous Locust mod because the description was incorrect. Fixed a bug whereby dismantling an item might not have been displayed in the mod preview. Now I've had this when I was playing recently with a friend who was going through the campaign. Anything I broke, even though I didn't have it, it wasn't showing and it made me double check going into the mods to see if it was working or not. So it's good to see that this bug is fixed because I can see how this could definitely, you know, cause some people some concern. They fixed an issue that would cause the in-sync accolade to not properly unlock for client players. Now, the accolades as we know have been a huge problem for quite some time and they continue to be. Some people are stuck at 99% and this is an ongoing problem and they are looking into it, still trying to get it resolved. At this point it is something that they're holding in quite high regards because it's just not fixing. But this one is. They fixed an issue that caused players to not get the proper reward if they completed an expedition during the final second of the reward tier. This is the one where when you complete the reward, it doesn't stop the timer. So the timer continues to tick because it's still going while you're slowing down and then it finishes. And for some people, when they get to it just within a second or two away, that slowdown where you get that the timer still continues before it stops, that's a real pain. That takes the royal mech when you're actually trying to get your gold and you miss it by a second because the game mechanic doesn't stop. At least that's what I'm thinking this is referring to and I hope it is because that was a horrible thing that they did. And I'm happy if it is that, that it's fixed. But this patch will also introduce rebalancing. They changed the Pyromancer's healthy lifestyle mod and changed its description to match its new behavior. They hope that this new change will improve survivability while channeling this skill. Old description was phase beam boosts your health regeneration by X for Y seconds after the skill ends. The new description is phaser beam boosts your health regeneration X for the skill duration. So now that skill isn't determined by a set factor of seconds, it is determined on how long that skill lasts. Finally, they have an ongoing set of problems and the one that I mentioned with the accolades, they say they're currently investigating the issue, their support team may be able to help trigger the 100% accolade to pop, but please post a reply and they're providing you a link if you have encountered this issue. And I know a number of you have encountered the issue where you're stuck on 99% progress for your accolade and if you have, post it in the link that's in the description below, post and hopefully they can help you and knock you over to that 100% that you need to complete your accolades. The only other one I want to mention is one I've already mentioned up top is the Xbox problems related to signing in and they reiterate that this is one of their top priorities if not top highest next to Stadia I guess as they continue to investigate. The next patch may well help with this issue but they are continuing to monitor it and they hope what changes they are applying will finally get those people that can't sign in or spend too long signing in finally getting into the game a lot sooner. Well everyone, if you made it this far, thanks so much. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, hit that red button to subscribe. Don't forget to ding that bell to stay up to date with all content I release on this channel. I don't just solely make Outriders videos, I also cover other looter shooters and I also cover a variety of other games and also do mini reviews along the way. I'm also on Twitch, so if you wanna come and check me out there, all of the information for that is in the description below. You can also find me on Twitter where I post all nonsensical stuff but that's where I usually post about my going live on Twitch if you want to check me out there as well. 
Well, everyone, thanks so much for being here. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video, which will be very soon. Until the next one, stay safe, everyone, and remain legend. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you look over to the left, you'll find a video that I'm recommending to you that I think you might actually enjoy. On the right, you'll see a video that is recommended by YouTube. I really do hope you enjoyed the video, and until the next one, remember to always remain legend.